so I got a ton of questions just talking to people about, you know, hey, you know, why do you guys make your houses so nice? Or, you know, why do you waste all that time putting all this stuff in your house? Your tenants are just going to tear it up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so I wanted to touch on that. We're on the way over to our new property right now. And um, I'm going to kind of show you some of the things that we've done to the house and hopefully some of the reasons why and help you guys. Uh, you guys that are just starting in landlording or finishing up a rental property and uh, give you some ideas about how to finish your properties off. But uh, while we're on the way over there, I, I just will give you some background and kind of what we believe um, and what we do with our properties. Um, our properties are, are they're nice and we strive to make nice houses because we want to have the nicest rental properties in our area. And I believe other than a lot of the bigger commercial establishments um, that we are the nicest properties in town and we want to attract that top quality of tenant to live in a nice house. And it's my belief and it's our company's belief that nice tenants and quality tenants take care of a house. And so we don't mind uh, upgrading a little bit. And the fact of the matter is though, if you're not screening your tenants, you're gonna get poor tenants that are gonna tear your house up. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll go back and I'll put another video together on how we screen our tenants. But that's really where all of this starts. If you don't want people to tear your house up, you need to find people that don't have a history of tearing up properties. So, another question I get asked a lot is, how do you decide at what level to renovate your rental houses? Now, a lot of our houses, gut jobs because we buy cheap houses so it's pretty easy for us to put whatever we want in the house but you know there are limitations in budget there are limitations in materials and a lot of other things so kind of the rule that I live by and this has been a hard lesson because I'm a contractor I came from the house flipping side of things where we basically outfitted a house to appeal to a buyer that was going to get a conventional mortgage on a house and maybe live there for 15 or 20 years. So the lesson that I have taught myself is we're going to build houses that are basic, they're safe, and they're efficient. Uh, and efficient, I mean efficient on maintenance. So if I look at a house and I can walk through and go, you know, in a pinch, I would move myself and my family into this house. Um, that's kind of what we go by. If I go in a house and I look at it and I say, there is no way that I would ever move my family or my kids into this house, that's a no-go for us. Or we're going to make some changes so that I feel comfortable living there. Because if I feel comfortable living there, my tenants will feel comfortable living there. And I'm not talking about we're going to design a place for a 70-inch flat screen TV and, and things like that. I mean, it's safe. The plumbing works, the electricity works, the doors lock and close, the windows lock and close, things like that. Basic necessities. This is a business. I don't care if you own one house or a thousand houses. Rental properties are a business. And if your business doesn't cash flow, and it doesn't cash flow because your tenants don't stay in the house, you're done. So keep that in mind. It's a good rule for us. It's worked out well, I think do what you want to do but um, that would be my advice is build a house that both you and your tenants would want to live in. Alright welcome to the house. We are in the kitchen right now so we're going to take you around real quick show you some of our really cheap rental hacks for tenant proofing or hardening your rental property and uh, see what you think. If you got any suggestions comments for us drop them below we'd love to hear about it and uh, show us what you've been doing in your houses. So one of the first things that I want to touch on is the kitchen. Backsplashes have always been a problem, especially around the stove. Uh, everybody's always cooking, splattering stuff on the walls, on the counters, things like that. So our cheap solution to the backsplash is to buy this acrylic sheet. It's an eighth inch acrylic. You find it a lot in commercial bathrooms and restaurants. Uh, it's pretty easy to cut. Um, it's more of a fiberglass based, acrylic based uh, sheet. But it comes with edging and uh, we put it up above our stove running all the way under the range hood and actually it comes around 
even on the other side of the sink, just to the edge of the top cabinets. And uh, runs behind the outlets and everything. This is gonna make it really easy for our housekeeper to come in and just wipe it clean or for the tenant to hopefully keep it clean. All right, so this acrylic is really tough. Another place we've used it is in our laundry area. Uh, we've gone 48 inches up from the floor uh, behind the washer and dryer. And uh, hopefully it's gonna make it really easy to uh, do a tenant turnover if our current tenant moves out. And uh, just come in here and wipe all the lint and the water and the dirt and grime off of it. And um, really no need to repaint in our laundry area now. Um, this stuff is paintable, but um, we're happy with the white. So we're just gonna keep it as it is. One of the other really quick hacks that we found is in the bathroom, we're getting rid of towel rods and substituting those for hooks. Um, our contractor just had a leftover piece of baseboard trim. We flipped it upside down, screwed it to the studs, and put in some pretty cheap um, $2 hooks from the big box store. We'll see how that works, but um, it's going to keep the kids from hanging on towel rods, pulling holes in the sheetrock, and stuff like that. So hopefully, uh, worst case, they'll just tear up the baseboard. We'll pop it off. We'll put a new piece on and um, we'll move on with life. The other alternative I've seen to this is people actually, when they do the framing uh, before they hang sheetrock, they'll actually go in and put a two by six board behind the sheetrock and screw the hooks directly into that. It all depends on how heavy your remodel is. Uh, for somebody who's renovating an existing space and not tearing out the sheetrock, this is a pretty good option for us. All right, so another one of those common rental maintenance issues is doorknobs. It seems like you're always calling your handyman to come over, they've got to patch the drywall because somebody has opened the door and slammed it into the wall. We have tried all different types of stoppers. We've tried the ones on the baseboard, we've tried the ones up on the hinges. They just don't work, they break, they put holes in the doors, they still put holes in the, uh, the drywall. The kids steal them, the dogs eat them. Uh, so the last couple of houses, we've gone to a rubber stopper on the wall and it's worked really well for us you can open the door you can slam it you can do whatever and uh, we haven't had too much trouble with these all right so the best part about this you can locate these wherever you want on the wall wherever the doorknob hits and when they slam that door it's gonna hit that bumper The other option to the door bumpers is I've seen some people using these furniture sliders. This one is a super slider. Uh, you can get these on Amazon, uh, which is actually where I bought the door bumpers. The only downside of these is you have to use some type of a double-sided tape. So these aren't my first option, but if you happen to be in a pinch, these will work. They're plastic. So, All right, so another thing we're trying out on this house, and this is the first time we've done it, we had a 48-inch closet opening on this house. Uh, one of my biggest nightmares has been bifold doors. I can't keep bifold doors on the tracks at my own house, let alone in a rental house. So we made the decision we're not going to install them, we're not going to repair them anymore. Uh, we will put a standard door, a pre hung door, on a 28, 30, 34, 36 inch door. Anything bigger than that that requires a custom door or a bifold, we're going to try these curtains, uh, especially in the bedrooms. We bought this at Walmart. We've got an adjustable coat rod and a curtain. I think total we have about $12 in it. The tenant is welcome to change this out. If they leave it and it gets gross, we can either wash it or we'll throw it away. And for $9.97, I can buy another one. Now, this one's a little bit short. You can have one that goes to floor length, but I think it's going to catch a lot of dirt, pet hair, grime, things like that. Completely up to you. But we're looking for easy maintenance and easy replacement. This is not something when it breaks, I'm gonna send my handyman out to fix, like a bifold door perhaps. Uh, so future maintenance, we probably save somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 to $150 per service call for my handyman to come out and repair a bifold door. Not to mention the cost of a door set is somewhere around $100 to $125. All right, I wanna talk about lighting for just a second. Lighting in your rental properties is important. Again, another high maintenance item, either you're going to have to replace light bulbs or your tenant is going to have to replace light bulbs. Additionally, light makes the power bill run up. Either you're paying the power bill because you're responsible for it as a landlord or a property owner or your tenant's paying for it. Either way, 
it's always important to be energy conscious in your rental properties because that's coming off of somebody's bottom line. If your tenant pays more in utilities, it's less money they have to pay for rent. If you have to pay for utilities, that's coming directly out of your cash flow for your property. So I'll show you the two types of lighting that we've done in our property, and I think it works really well for us. So the first type of lighting we use in all of our properties when we do a complete remodel is a recessed flush mount LED can. Uh, you can you see these all over the place at the big box stores, electrical wholesalers. What these are is basically a sealed LED bulb. It requires no maintenance on your part, and it installs directly into a flush mount six inch can. And by can, I mean a recessed light. If you already have recessed lights with a bulb in it, the fixture comes with an adapter. You screw it in like a light bulb, you pop it into the can, and it's maintenance free for at least 10 years. If for some reason it fails, they cost about $15. Pull it out, put a new one in, and you're good to go. We've used these in both of our, our kitchen and our laundry area. Personally, I think the light from these is fantastic. Uh, we only have three uh, in our kitchen, and then there's one around the corner in kind of the entryway on the side door. Again, our kitchen is about 20 by 10, so about 200 square feet, and it's more than enough light. Additionally, we've got the light uh, in the uh, vent above the range. Again, the second place we've used these lights is in our laundry area, an area that's prone to a little bit of humidity and moisture with the washer and dryer running, as well as some lint buildup. So we just want something that's easy to clean. It's not gonna collect a lot of cobwebs and dust and things like that. Additionally, really bright light, really easy to see in a utility area, uh, and it provides a good, uh, just a good overall aesthetic look. It's very clean. All right, so the second kind of light that's really prevalent in our houses are these dome lights. You can buy these at Home Depot, Lowe's. We buy ours at the electrical wholesale outlet. They're a little bit pricier, but I think we get a better quality product. Uh, the other great part about these is with LED bulbs and a frosted dome, these put off a lot of light for not a lot of money, and they're very efficient. For some reason, if your tenant breaks the dome, we can go right back to the wholesaler, we'll get another dome. These are about $10, and we'll just put it up for them. Something else you're gonna notice in all of our properties is with these dome lights, there's no ceiling fans in any of the bedrooms. Every bedroom gets one of these lights, and that's it. We don't install ceiling fans because they're just another maintenance issue. This house has brand new central air conditioning and heat. There's no reason for ceiling fans. When we bought this house, it had fans. We immediately took them out and replaced them with the dome lights. All right, let's talk flooring. Flooring is one of the most important uh, considerations in your rental property. We've used two different types of flooring in our, in our house over here. Uh, what you'll notice is there is no carpet anywhere in this house. Everything is laminate. We buy a seven mil laminate for the entire house except for our wet areas. So this would be the laundry area, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. For your normal wear areas in the house, you can choose whatever laminate you want, whatever suits your color. Uh, seven mil is a kind of a mid-grade, we use a builder's grade. It runs us about 79 cents a square foot. For our kitchens, we're actually using, again, a laminate, but this is a 100% water-resistant laminate. Uh, it's got a more of a rubber finish under the veneer, and it's going to help prevent this veneer from pulling up if it gets spilled on. Now, the important thing to understand about laminate is nothing is 100% waterproof. It is water resistant. So if perhaps your tenant spills uh, or the washer overflows or the bathtub, the kids are splashing water in the bathtub, if the water sits on this laminate for a long period of time, it will curl the veneer. There's just no getting around it. However, temporary spills, this water resistant laminate is gonna limit damage in your property. So we highly recommend that you go look for this. We paid a little bit more for this, which is why we only used it in the wet areas. We're somewhere around $1.50 to $1.75 a square foot. All right, so the other really cool thing that we did in this house, and I had never actually considered it before uh, until my contractor pointed it out, is he actually went in all of our wet areas so again the kitchen the bathroom and the laundry area and he siliconed all of the joints between the floor and the baseboard so there it's hard to see there's a bead of silicone here around the entire perimeter of our kitchen bathroom and laundry area 
his theory on it is it's going to prevent water from getting underneath the baseboard and reaching the sheetrock or going around the edge of the the flooring where it goes under and it meets the wall so i think it's a really good idea again it's just a safeguard it doesn't cost you hardly anything to buy a five or six dollar tube of silicone and just run a bead all around the perimeter talk about kitchen plumbing really fast uh, in our last property we had a huge issue within 30 days of the tenant moving in with the sink sprayer and the valve that um, either runs the faucet or the sprayer so one of the decisions that we made on this house was do away with the sprayer we don't need it we got actually bought the kit from the hardware store that had the sprayer with it and we got a small cap or it came with the kit or something and we just capped off the sprayer. Your tenants don't need it. The sink is small enough where they can use the faucet to wash the dishes. Maybe that sounds hard, but it's a reality of running a, a rental business. And um, every time you have to send somebody out to replace a sprayer, it costs you money out of your pocket. So consider that. Hopefully this is gonna work out well for us um, with the plumbing in the kitchen. All right, I want to thank you guys for coming by the house. Hopefully some of the stuff we've shared with you is useful. You can use it in your properties. And we just wanted to really show you that tenant proofing a property is not that complicated and it's really not that expensive. So we've showed you a lot of products. There are thousands of other products that will help you both preserve your property's condition, reduce your maintenance costs, and increase your cash flow every month. So if you like this video, Comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. We'd love to know what you're doing in your properties because sometimes it takes a village. Maybe you can share an idea that we can implement in our next video or our next property. So stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing and we'll catch you next time.